my sister was two years younger than me. Okay. And we, but we were in the same class. Okay. So my father will say that one day you're going to be studying with her kids. As in school, I said, people like us don't study other people's written books. We write our own books. And my dad is like, okay, you know, I'm going to, here's a slipper and coming <laughs> to you. Well, today I'm going to be meeting someone who's not just the Michelin star chef, but also our favorite master chef India judge. A cookbook writer, a filmmaker, a humanitarian, the list goes on. So let's go and meet our favorite chef Vikas Khanna. Welcome to Dubai. How is it being back in the Emirates again? I think Dubai is something which is the stage for where East meets West. There's no other, no other city on the planet which is a best, better example than this. For being in, we talk about the food world, we're looking at ingredients, what you get here, the chefs, the variety, the aspirations, and at the same time, the arts, the cinema, the architecture. We're looking at Dubai as one of the biggest global cities Maybe. between yeah. East and West, you know. Yeah. Of course, in the Western world, you have New York, but this is like the city which evolved in front of us. Yes, yes, for sure. Like someone who's been like born and brought up here, I've seen that evolution, so it's like crazy. Every single day. Yeah, it's amazing. Could you just tell for our UAE audience, how did you start with this journey? How did you become a chef? How did the magic happen? My grandmom was a great chef, cook actually, he's called it. And um, she's the one who told me to follow my dreams. And I was very passionate about serving people. and and. And I felt that, you know, she was the one who would take me to Golden Temple for the community kitchens and under, make, making us understand that when things would come from the farm, we have to take the first bag to the temple and for the community kitchens. I think those simple, simple, simple rituals were something which I felt that, you know, th this is not just about the food. Cooking is much bigger than that. And uh, I've always had a blessing and I fought with the entire system. You know, talking about 1990s, when your son decides to go to culinary school, everybody disowns you. Yeah. You're totally disinherited because they never thought that cooking would be a profession which can be glorified or, you know, be at a position when there's no security for him for financially or emotionally, right? Yeah. And who's going to get married to him? And who, yeah. everything I heard. And then, boom, looking back 35 years and you say that, I've been in the kitchen for 35 years and understanding that how the whole thing has changed. So how was it working in the community kitchen of the Golden Temple? Um, you know, as a child, the only thing you were proud of if you could make a round roti. <laughs> yeah. You're just there and rolling in bread and, you know, you see so many kids now. But, you know, the, the temple has changed now. There's no modernized ways of doing stuff. But our times, it was a relatively smaller kitchen. But the beauty of this was, you know, just sitting there and everyone is chanting and almost like it made you understand something which is much more powerful than food was the community. And for me, that has been the center of my career, center of the career. And living in New York for 22 years, I feel that that is what I need to always be a part of just the recipe. Mm. It has to be a much bigger picture of the culture. And that comes from, you know, the first few years of your life, how you were trained to look at the world. Yeah. Well, Dubai isn't much far from India and well, in Dubai, we have a huge population of yeah. Indians by itself. Is that one of the reasons why you chose to open your restaurants here in Dubai? Well, um, I think Dubai gives you great access to ingredients and it has great access to the world. And um, I think it's, it's, of course, it's closer to India and home and it's good that I can just hop on a plane and get to the way yeah. and then go and see mom. But I do feel that uh, it's, it's something which is very central to me. And I've had a restaurant here since almost 10 years. We opened Junoon in Dubai. And uh, now Kinara, you feel that, you know, there's a totally evolving market which happens in Dubai, mm -hmm. which I don't see that in New York. Mm -hmm. That shifts I see which yeah. happening in Dubai, I don't see that in New York so much. New York has a different advantage of being there, but. I feel that this is amazing that it's close to home. Of course, that's one of the reasons. Okay. So you've been in New York like for probably like a lot of your time. So what is that uh, one perception that people have towards Indian food that you would like to like bust? Like, no, that's not, 
that's a myth or something like that. I think um, I used to be exhausted earlier than when people would tell me that it's very unhealthy. I said, I eat Indian food almost every single day. And also that uh, all Indian food is very spicy and there's just the curry and you know there was a, there, there is a lot of stigma and stereotyping of stuff and but i do feel that you stereotype something which matters why don't you stereotype cuisine from a lesser known country mm-hmm. because india is so well known yeah. that the stereotype is so easy to stereotype the whole thing and many people said oh we went to london and that was the best indian food i said yeah now you need to take a flight and go to india and eat the best indian <laughs> food but i do feel that you know the indian food in dubai is pretty much amazing you are the master chef you are the michelin star chef so there's no one better to play a fun food based game with okay. it's a very quick easy this or that okay. i'm going to have like two food options you just pick which one this or yeah. that okay okay let's go chole chawal or rajma chawal rajma chawal desert or savory savory new york or india Tough one. Pass. Okay. Chai or coffee? Coffee. Desi khana or international cuisine? Desi khana always. Oh well, that was a fun game, and we definitely got to know your picks. Um, let's talk about your latest launch, which is obviously when I come to think of food, it's about your book launch, Sacred Food of India. How did you come about the process? Like, what was the idea? Like, how did you come up with Sacred Foods of India? In 2008 I made a documentary series called Holy Kitchens in which I talked about faith and food. And I still remember very clearly that there was a mass shooting at Wisconsin Gurdwara in, in the US at the Sikh temple. And a lot of people told me that you know uh, this 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 is your community you need to go out and talk about it. And we did started doing this showing this documentary. and we got access to some of the biggest ivy league colleges where they had standing applause for this documentary i got into film festivals and i did not know a small documentary of 28 minutes could move people so much and in 2014 i was in orissa in puri and i saw the most amazing rath yatra and the food i said oh my god we need to do something we we highlight all these places and i've been a huge admirer of ajmer sharif darga and i feel that you know this is amazing for me that we should be able to highlight these recipes honor the people who make them and package them in a way that the world pays attention the book basically from what i understand is about um prasads and foods that are served in these holy places across the country while the book obviously is so unique and interesting yes um Let's talk about is it's a uh, digital launch. I want to know like what made you launch it as an NFT? Like what was the process like? I will be honest, a few years ago I did not know much what's going on. But everybody said that you know you have always been the ground breaking chef of anything you do is always 10 steps ahead and then you know I thought this was great because you're reaching out to whole new markets, you're also reaching out to the kids whom we are trying to communicate about India. They will this is more accessible to them this is what they are up the alley for so i said let's do something which connects us to them mm-hmm. we have to speak the common words and vocabulary and language mm-hmm. so this is why this developed into an idea of it gets let's get it to this kind of a platform where you have bigger access to world you have bigger audience but you also reaching out to the newer generations mm-hmm. to talk about india in such a sacred and basic form what people say yeah. definitely i don't think this anything like this even happened before so no. even when i came across this i was like this is amazing like this is something like right up you know with the time as we're going with getting into this virtual space the world is changing yeah, the you know post pandemic i feel that you know of course this is my twin this this was written many many years ago but the packaging and the reaching out to the world became very predominantly yeah. based on how do we reach out to new generations this is my 38th book and i'm still so anxious and thank god to this crazy unsettling mind of mine which i want to keep going um i also know that you made a promise to your father about writing 50 books and which when i read that i was just like so t- like i was like oh my god this is so emotional and sweet i can see the whole family connect that you have with your own family so 
are you planning to launch? <laughs> it was because of my sister. Uh, so I was so bad in studies that I was only interested in cooking. Okay. So I failed. My sister was two years younger than me. Okay. And we, but we were in the same class. Okay. So my father will say that one day you're going to be studying with her kids. Like, you know, you are <laughs> never going to cross this, never going to pass in school. I said, people like us don't study other people's written books. We write our own books. And me and my sister laughed and laughed. And my dad is like, okay, you know, I'm going to, here's a slipper and coming <laughs> to you. So I said, don't worry, I'm going to write 50 books. And my sister is like, oh, sure. And, you know, when you were in America in 2004, my sister told me, you know, you promised your dad, you're going to write 50 books. I said, I was just upset. Who's going to buy my books? She's saying, oh, you know, you have no idea how much voice you have. Yeah. And uh, since 2004, I've been working hard that I can keep my promise to him. But he used to, when he used to be alive, he used to tell me that the book, how many, he never used to say 38, he'll say 12 left. He'll always <laughs> tell me. <laughs> so I, if he was listening to me right now, he'll say that I'll do it. If, if I we all, we all believe that you can. And uh, I've written 43. <laughs> I've written 43 and I publish very slowly because yeah, I feel yeah. to, I need to give full honor to the books I bring out. And, you know, it's also being an independent chef, you know, you also think that, you know, there's so much of uh, finances and yeah. economy which is on your shoulders. So you need to balance those things out to that, you know, this is celebrating India at 75. Yeah. There's a huge buzz around India right now yeah, to yeah. bring out a project. But I don't want to do anything half-heartedly just for the reason of doing it. Um, are there any other books like after this one that you're planning to launch as NFT? I don't know yet, but I am the content creator. Okay. For me, it's more important that I do the content and what forms it takes to evolve, it's the universe. Well, that was quite impressive. Everything that we learned about you and the book, we got a whole lot of Thank insight. You. Thank you so much for being with us today. It was a pleasure talking to you. My pleasure. Alright, you guys, and with that, we come towards the end of this video. For more such videos, please follow Curly Tales Middle East.